A letter from the government of Quebec requesting special powers, followed by several hours an earlier request from that government for the deployment of armed forces personnel in some parts of the province of Quebec. The House will know that the government of Quebec had earlier yesterday evening proposed to the FLQ kidnappers that in return for the surrender of their two hostages, Mr. James Cross and Mr. Pierre Laporte, safe conduct out of Canada would be promised them and the parole and that parole would be recommended that the five members now in jail, five members of the FLQ members now in jail who had requested parole. That proposal brought no positive response. It's a matter of It's a matter of deep regret and grave concern to me, as I'm sure it is to all honorable members, that the condition of our country makes necessary this proclamation. We in this house have all felt very strongly, I know, that democracy was nowhere in a healthier state than in Canada. That nowhere was there less need for frustrated men to turn to violence to attain their political ends. I still believe firmly that this is so. Yet in recent years, we have been forced to acknowledge the existence within Canada of a new and terrifying type of person. One who in earlier times would have been described as an anarchist, but who is now known as a violent revolutionary. These persons allege that they are seeking social change through novel means. In fact, they are seeking the destruction of the social order through clandestine and violent means. Faced with such persons and confronted with authoritative assessments of the seriousness of the risk to persons and property in the Montreal area, the government had no responsible choice but to act as it did last night. Given the rapid deterioration of the situation as mentioned by Prime Minister Bourassa, and given the expiration of the time offered for the release of the hostages, it became obvious that the urgency of the situation demanded rapid action. The absence both of adequate time to take other steps or of alternate legislative authority dictated the use of the War Measures Act. After informing the leaders of the opposition parties of our intention to act in this fashion, and following the receipt of the letters that I have tabled a moment ago, the government proclaimed the act. The government recognizes that the authority contained in the Act is much broader than is required in the present situation, notwithstanding the seriousness of the events. For that reason, the regulations which were adopted permit the exercise of only a limited number of the powers available under the Act. Nevertheless, I wish to make it clear today that the government regards the use of the War Measures Act as only an interim and in the since mentioned above, somewhat unsatisfactory measure. Following the passage of enough time to give the government the necessary experience to assess the type of statute which may be required in these circumstances, it's my firm intention to discuss with the leaders of the opposition parties the desirability of introducing legislation of a less comprehensive nature. In this respect, I earnestly solicit from the leaders and from all honorable members constructive suggestions for the amendment of the regulations. Such suggestions will be given careful consideration for possible inclusion in any new statute. May I say in conclusion, Mr. Speaker, that no Canadian takes less lightly than I the seriousness of the present situation in Canada and the gravity of the measures which the government has been asked to assume in order to meet that situation. Coincidentally, the fate of the two kidnapped hostages weighs very heavily in my mind, as it does on all of us. I recognize, and I hope others do also, that this extreme position into which the government has been forced is in some respects a trap. It is a well-known technique of revolutionary groups to attempt to destroy society by unjustified violence to goad the authorities into inflexible attitudes. The revolutionaries then employ this evidence of alleged authoritarianism as justification for the need to use violence in their renewed attacks on the social structure. 
I appeal to all Canadians not to become so obsessed by what the government has done today in response to terrorism that they forget the opening play in this vicious game. That play is taken by the revolutionaries. They chose to use bombing, murder, and kidnapping. To those who will voice concern at the extent of the powers assumed by the government under this procedure, I can only say that I sympathize with their attitude and applaud them for speaking out. I hasten to suggest, however, that the legislative record of this parliament in the field of individual liberties contributes unequivocally to its credibility and good faith. I promise that the House shall be kept fully informed if any changes in the regulations are made. Furthermore, I pledge that all extraordinary powers will be withdrawn as soon as it, as it has been demonstrated that there is a cessation of the violence and the threats of violence which made necessary their introduction. I intend to repeat that assurance and offer an explanation of government activities in this matter to the Canadian people through the public media later today. Before I sit down, Mr. Speaker, it would be inappropriate were I, not, were I not to mention to the House my gratitude for the understanding which has been offered me in the last 24 hours by the leaders of the opposition parties and by certain members of the Privy Council, including the Right Honourable member from Prince Albert and the Right Honourable Lester B. Pearson. For the wise counsel, I say thank you. consequences for our country, and one which uh, I hope I can discuss in that, uh, in that sense and in the full recognition of the very grave issues that are involved in the measures that the government has, has taken. The Prime Minister did inform me and the leaders of the other parties last night of the probability of this action being taken. And I appreciate that courtesy. There's also some discussion. I know the Prime Minister didn't intend at all to indicate that uh, the action that the government proposed to take has been approved by the leaders of the opposition parties, but I just wish to make it perfectly clear that, that uh, well, I was informed of the decision to be taken, and while there was an opportunity for some discussion, I, of course, was in no position and did not uh, give any approval. As to the legitimacy of the proclamation of the War Measures Act, that is the legal power of the government to issue this proclamation, these regulations. I'm certainly not contesting that. As my understanding is that uh, the finding of the government that there is a real or apprehended insurrection is conclusive. And uh, the government is in the position to, is the only one that's in the position to know about this, and the government has received the letters that the Prime Minister has referred to from the Governor of Quebec and the civic authorities in the city of Montreal. 